This is the SEO Mindset Podcast with your hosts, Sarah McDowell and Tasmin Sullivan. This podcast is for SEO professionals and each week with the help of our wonderful guests, we discuss the important stuff that actually affects our careers and progression, but sadly often doesn't get talked about. You know, the invaluable soft and interpersonal skills that are often taken for granted, such as the skills we need for listening, time management, communication, and more. We also talk about the big issues that affect us and our careers, such as burnout, imposter syndrome, self-belief, saying no, plus other big issues and obstacles. With this podcast, we want to share knowledge on topics that unlock our listeners' true potential and enhance not only their careers, but all parts of their lives. So are you ready to prioritize your own personal growth and career development? Then let's crack on with this week's episode. Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the SEO Mindset Podcast, where your hosts are myself, Sarah McDowell, and the wonderful Tasman Suleiman, with new episodes going out every Thursday. This week, very excited because we have a special episode for you. Last Wednesday, so the 24th of April, we did a live podcast the night before Brighton SEO. The topic was all about being authentically and unapologetically you, where me and Tasman were joined by a special guest, Willow Mack, Senior Vice President of Stat Search Analytics. The podcast episode was recorded live in front of an audience, which is why we can share the episode with you this week, which is fabulous because you you don't miss out. You get to be, if you unfortunately couldn't join us on that night, don't worry. We can share the conversation, the fabulous conversation that we had with you this week. Now, before we get into the episode, just a quick reminder about how you can support the podcast First up, you can give us a one-off donation. So we are set up on Buy Me A Coffee. You can find the links in our show notes. But basically, you can give us a one-off donation. You can literally buy us a coffee. And me and Tasman would be very appreciative of that. You can also subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. Again, follow those links in the show notes. And if you haven't already, please, please, please give us a a five-star review. Your SEOs, you understand algorithms, you know how they work. So the more reviews we get, the better it is for our podcast and the more visibility that we get. We basically want to share this podcast as much as we can. Okay, that's enough with this introduction. Let's get cracking with this week's special episode and I really, really hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone. I'll let uh, the last few people take a seat, but we are officially starting, which is very exciting. Oh, I can hear myself now. That's that's off-putting, isn't it, when you can hear your own voice? Um, so, yeah, we've got an hour with you guys of a live podcast. So, this is your last chance. I can see someone wanting to come in. That's fine. Come on. Come on. It's fine. I mean... You can come to the stage now in the... (laughs) No? No? That's fine. Uh, So, this is your last chance. Like I said earlier, there is loads of drinks in the fridge. So, if you haven't got a drink, please do take this opportunity to go and help yourself. There's water, juice, beer, Coke. So, yeah, go and do that. Um, So, yes... This is a live podcast where it's a collaboration between the SEO Mindset podcast and the Search with Candor podcast. Now, unfortunately, we all see Jack here. He can't be with us because he decided that a wedding was more important. I mean, I know. (laughs) It's an important wedding. Okay, let's, I feel bad booing Jack. Maybe we shouldn't boo Jack. Oh. Okay, that's that's fine. Jack, we miss you. We do miss we do miss you, Jack. But he'll be back. He'll be back. 
Uh, so tonight, the topic is all about being authentically you. I think the title was authentically and unapologetically, which is quite hard to say. It's a big word, isn't it, to get your mouth round. Um, so yeah, we've got a good conversation to have tonight all about embracing yourself and why it's important to do so. So I'm really excited for this conversation. Now, uh, a couple of things. So this is a live podcast. So after this has been recorded, it will be available on the SEO Mindset podcast and the Search with Canda podcast. So in your goodie bags, there are leaflets where you can subscribe and follow to both of those podcasts. If you're not already doing that, really urge you to do so because that would be awesome. Uh, we're also being live streamed to YouTube. Can we get it? Oh. There, there we go. Thank you. So if you can all, there's cameras dotted around. So if you can see a camera and just wave and, you know, make people feel like they're part of this, this event, what's going on. And Yes, and my last thing before we, we get into it is I need to say a massive, massive thank you to our sponsors that have helped us make this event possible because obviously there's costs involved that um, like getting pizza, there's chocolate, the goodie bags, the drinks, hiring out this beautiful space. Um, so what I would like to do is welcome each sponsor just to come up say a few words and so we can give them a bit of a round of applause and a thank you so first things first can i have elisa from sistrix our main sponsor hey. thank you everyone for being here i'm elisa from sistrix and we are a sponsor since three years in a row we are very proud of being sponsor of the SEO Mindset podcast, and I'm very happy to see a lot of new faces here this time. Keep coming, uh, keep spreading the word. Uh, my colleague Steve Payne would have also been here. Um, you can meet him tomorrow at the SEO Brighton SEO. He will be at the Skyline Room at 9:30. And uh, yes, enjoy the event. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to Stat, who are our goodie bag sponsors. So, yeah. So, can I welcome Chris to the stage? Carry on the claps. Don't make this up. Thank you very much. And for the record, I also had a wedding to go to, but I cared about you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be here with you. It was my brother's wedding. No, I'm just joking, of course. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, from my accent or lack of accent or accent, you can probably tell that I'm not from around this, this way. So uh, many of us from the STAT team traveled from, from Vancouver, Canada to be here. So we're very excited. <laughs> so we're very excited for everyone to be here with us tonight. So I really appreciate it. Um, so... A little bit about STAT. As you heard, we're one of the sponsors. If you're unfamiliar with STAT, we are a, we are a high volume rank tracker and it lets you understand the SERP in, with extreme granularity, right? And how we do that as well, we let you take those high volumes of keywords. So whether that's thousands, 10,000s, hundreds of thousands, really doesn't matter. And we do that daily uh, in any country, location, or language to help you better understand your competition, um, measure performance, as well as find any opportunities. So if you're all looking at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> really, stat is better seen than spoken about. So who here is going to Brighton SEO? Great. Yeah, awesome. So we're going to have a booth there. So please come by. Even if you're not interested in rank tracking, we love to make friends all around the world. A couple other reasons to come. So we have a, a sneaker draw. So we have really cool sneakers. So you could win that. Okay. So the shirt, I, I'm the only one wearing this shirt. Apparently, <laughs> apparently our team will still wear it. But we, we're giving away these shirts for free, and they're 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 world famous. Uh, what else? Uh, we are launching a new UI, so you can get a sneak peek there. Got one more thing. Ah, so in your goodie bags, we have a one pager with all the other Moz SEO tools. We also we also have a QR code there that will give you a, a Brighton SEO and SEO mindset promo for Stat. So, yeah, please come say hi, and uh, I think you're in for a treat for tonight's podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, 
have also put stress balls in the goodie bags as well. So if you're ever feeling a little overwhelmed, a little stressed, reach into your bag and give them a squeeze. That was weird when I said that, so I'm just going to move <laughs> on. Uh, yeah, let's not get into my head. Uh, we also have Majestic. So a huge thanks to Majestic. They, we kind of asked these guys last minute, and Steve stepped up to the plate. He gave us money for, like, the drinks. He gave us a load of chocolate. He lives, um, he went by the Cadbury's uh, chocolate factory. So that is where I was. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say that you live at the Cadbury's Chocolate Factory, but that's not right, and that would just be lethal. <laughs> and also put some awesome swag in the bag. So, over to you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, so, many, many years ago, back in the 90s, I graduated. I got my first job. Um, it was at Iceland, frozen food. And the delivery driver turned around to me and he said, Steve, we spend most of our waking lives at work. So it's worth putting that little bit of extra effort in to get the most of that. And that's really resonated with me throughout my career and sparked a little bit of a career-long passion in mindfulness. So when Sarah reached out to say, you know, could we help a little bit, I was absolutely delighted. So oh. thank you. Oh, yeah, majestic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we do backlinks. Uh, Philip and Tony will be managing this. Person can stand at the show. Um, and they'd love to chat to you about uh, all and anything to do with uh, links. Um, so, yeah, please have a chat to them. And um, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much. And then two more that I've got to squeeze in, and then I promise we will get started. Uh, I would like to invite Charlie. He's wearing two hats tonight, so he has been the wonderful musician in the corner. Um, but he's also from Silicon Brighton, and Silicon Brighton, Tasman, They've been here from the start. Like when we first even thought about this idea, we didn't know what we needed. We didn't know what tech, we didn't know what venue. We just had this bright idea like, wouldn't it be nice if we did this? And Silicon Brighton have made it all possible for us. So over to you. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you guys all so much for coming tonight. Um, yeah, like you say, my name's Charlie. I work with Silicon Brighton. We are the hosts of the tech sector here in Brighton and Hove. We support over 30 different tech meetups across the city by helping connecting them with venues and sponsors and bring the AV support tonight. We're helping do the live stream. So if you've got a meetup group or something like that, which needs a little extra help, then please come and have a chat with me at the end um, because we're looking for more groups, more volunteers, more helpers, more sponsors, supporters, just about everything. So if you've got... Um, any way that we could that we could help you out or that we can get involved together, please come and have a chat with me at the end. Thank you very much. And we also have, uh, so Charlie's going to do us a few songs after the podcast as well. So that would be a lovely way to end, won't it? Um, and then my last one is Project. So the beautiful venue that we're in, we've been here last year as well they're very accommodating beautiful space they really help out and i was just having a conversation with alex and she said that anyone who is in brighton who likes this space it's co-working meeting rooms venue space that you can go and talk to her for a sort of free trial free whatever so make sure you do that and yeah i believe that is all the i was going to say all the admin do we reckon yeah. Yeah. yeah, is that is that good? Have we have we ticked all the boxes? <laughs> so let's get oh, on yeah. with the podcast, the live podcast. So I think what we need to do is introduce ourselves. Uh, and I'm aware that I've done a lot of talking. So just quick, my name's Sarah McDowell. I co-host the SEO Mindset podcast. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to have this conversation. And I'm very excited who I'm joining, who's joining me on the panel with me tonight. Uh, I have my co-host and a special guest, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Good. Oh, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. I am one of one of the folks who has traveled here from Vancouver. So my name is Willow Mack. I am the senior vice president of Stat Search Analytics, um, and I'm super excited to to be here and uh, get to chat on this super exciting topic. Um, so thanks for the whoop. Yeah. Team, appreciate that. <laughs> Let's get another woo. Any more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So my name is Tasmin. I co-host the SEO Mindset podcast with Sarah. And in the rest of my time, I coach and I do corporate training. And my life is just filled with, with wonderfulness. <laughs> that sounds great. That gets a woo. <laughs> You've got a good woo, Willow. I'm a loud woo right now, actually. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good. And obviously the acoustics in here really volumize it as well. So, yeah. So tonight we are talking about being authentically you. And I think this is a trending topic because I don't know if you've seen uh, when you're scrolling through social media, you see all the memes, don't you? All the lovely Pinterest quotes and stuff about embracing yourself, be authentic. But I suppose what is hard is that's wonderful, that's great, and we should all do that. But what does it actually mean? So when we're talking about being authentically ourselves, what is that? What does that mean to us? And I think a good place to start is to have a conversation about that. And I'm going to ask the question to you, Willow. So for you, if I was to say, be authentically you, Willow, what does that mean? Scary. No, um, I think for me, I'm getting a ton of echo on myself, Charlie. Try again. Better? Yes, good. I can see nods. I think for me, when I when we were talking about this and thinking about authenticity, what really resonated for me was how much has evolved over time. Like how much when I think about what being authentic is, if you had asked me 20 years ago, I would have said, you get all of me. You get the good, you get the bad, you get the ugly. I probably would have said something like, oh, I'm direct, right? I'm just being honest. I'm being direct. But fundamentally, I was being rude. Right. Like you. And so you start to learn over time that authenticity doesn't mean giving all of you all of the time, for me at least, or expecting that people have to consume all of me all of the time. And so it's being about finding boundaries and finding spaces to show up where I feel like I can be my whole self but not have to give your whole self. Um, I don't know if that resonates with with you at all. 100%. I mean, Tasman, you're nodding, and I feel like you want to interject. And I think it's a journey. You, um, it was interesting when you said, if you'd asked me 20 years ago, yeah. this is what I would have said. If you'd asked me 20 years ago, what is your authentic self, I wouldn't have known what you were talking about. I think um, f for many reasons, partly cultural, mm. I didn't know that there was an authentic self. And I just spent a lot of time um, being what other people wanted me to be, whether it was parents or teachers or whatever. So for me, it's, um, oh, so I'm a person and I have values and being authentic is being in line with those values. So now it's, um, for me, it's, I'm, if I'm not in, if something's wrong and I'm, there's a resistance, I know there's something wrong. There's, some part of me that I'm not being true to myself. So it's when I'm in flow, when I'm in comfortable in my own skin. And like you said, that I don't have to be all of me everywhere, mm -hmm. but whoever I am, I have to be comfortable in my own skin. And that's such a tricky thing because resonating with you both, because you do feel that to be authentic, you have to bring everything all the time when that's that's not the case because there's for me and I'm on a journey so from my perspective I'm a really big people pleaser and I think we're gonna go into like challenges more <laughs> um but something that I find is I'm on such a journey and self-awareness I think this term gets sort of used a lot and it's a lot of hard work but it's important to do it at the same time because yeah, like if you don't have that self-awareness and you're not in tune with who you are, I I feel that I was doing the thing where showing too much of myself, also not really knowing who I was, but also being a bit of a chameleon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm because I'm a people pleaser and I like people and I want people to like me, I end up being a chameleon and adopting who I'm trying to not impress or maybe impress I don't know if that's a strong word but you kind of 
I don't know, you agree with their values, what they like, what they're passionate about. And it depends who they are in your life as well and how much you look up to them. I think that's a part of human behavior though, right? Like we all want to be acknowledged. We all want to be appreciated. And there are times and places where like on my journey, if you will, where I have felt like I'm compromising myself and I'm, oh, I'm compromising. Like, I don't totally feel comfortable in this or I'm having to play a role to be successful, but it's kind of what life is, is that you show up with a toolkit and you pick the different tools at the different times. I think I've, I've learned to not, not be so hard on myself and not sometimes that inner dialogue is what gets you like really messed up and I've actually learned by way of surrounding myself with really great people is actually listen to what people are saying about you take it in and acknowledge it as such rather than you just taking that internal negative voice and and so I've learned more about who I am as my authentic self through my relationships, through the relationships that I've built, as well as, of course, internal reflection. But it is encouraging, like, listen to the kind things your friends say about you. Listen to the things that people you work with say about you and take those things as true, rather than, I think, human behaviors to challenge them, right? It's that negative sort of critical self-talk. No, no. no. <laughs> but um, what you said about self-reflection and self-awareness. Mm. So your journey has been through what other people. Oh, and so much therapy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's great that in you know we're in a society now that we are able to say that mm-hmm. and understand that there is a role for counseling, there is a role for therapy, there is a role for coaching, there's a role for mentoring, because we never thought that we could, we needed to look after our physical form on our own. Who thought that we were able to, you know, look after our minds on our own? Why, why was that even a thing? But, um, for, but what you said, self-reflection and self-awareness is the hardest journey mm-hmm. to begin, the hardest journey. But once you do it, once you start taking those steps and you get better at it, life is so much better and life is never the same. So true. It's so true. And going back to your point about therapy, (laughs) like I, um, so I'm recently having therapy and it took me some years to realize because I was sort of under the impression that um, so there's obviously your big T, your big trauma, your little trauma. And I used to always think, well, I don't have big trauma. What do I need therapy for? Why do I need to talk to someone else? But I think and also I'm very aware that I'm in a fortunate position where I can afford Mm -hmm. therapy Mm -hmm. and counseling because it's it's expensive. Yeah. Um, it's not highly accessible. I mean, I wish that we lived in a world where you just got therapy and counseling for free because it's such a big thing. And it doesn't matter what happens to you because I had to stop comparing my issues or like what I was struggling with, with other people. Like, yeah. oh, well, they have it much harder than me. Do you know what I mean? And when I sort of realized that, and I don't know, going to therapy was hard as well because it also felt really self-indulgent. Oh, it's super, because, yeah. Every time I go, I'm like, oh, sorry. Like, just talk about me again, <laughs> you know? Like, I'm, yeah, and or I'll say, oh, I don't have anything to talk about. And then my therapist is like, so why are you here? Well, maybe just one or two things, you know? It just, it feels super self-indulgent, but I think that's kind of the stuff if you can, and, and I totally agree with you that, being able to sit up here and say, oh, you know, I can make decisions about where I want to work and I can go to therapy is a very privileged position to sit in. And I absolutely acknowledge that. Um, But being able to find mentorship or an unbiased third party just to share with, I think is super valuable. And that can be in the form of therapy or that can be you know, a mentor as you were saying, or someone who sits just like once removed outside of your life I think you have the opportunity to have a different quality of conversation with someone like that. Yeah. You keep giving me eyes, Tasman, that you're missing eyes. I'm I'm just. (laughs) 
I mean, yeah, and um, so it's so, since coming to terms with it, it's not self-indulgent, that it's actually important. Mm. It's been such an eye-opener, and it's helped me to sort of realise why I behave in certain ways and why I say certain things or why I'm drawn to certain people. Um, and I think it's, and it's okay to, I don't know, take the time out to spend it on yourself mm -hmm. to realize what it is. And to be fair, I, I still don't really know who I am authentically. Do you know what I mean? Like, how about you two? Do you feel that you, or is it always like a journey or? I, for me personally, I feel like it's a journey. There's times where I have a real sense of myself and you get very confident in that and then something will happen and it rocks you. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, I can swear, right? And I'm like, yeah. Okay. You would. <laughs> I mean, we never have before. Oh, okay, it's <laughs> first time for everything. I'm being authentically myself. Next, <laughs> next time, tell me and I'll make a beep okay, noise. Beep. I apologize in advance, uh, or actually in arrears. Um, but no, I do have moments where you think like, oh, I thought I had this figured out. And I think, you know, it's been so interesting the process of thinking about talking about this because for me, it really is, I'm still figuring it out. I'm still, and I think the acknowledgement and the grace to give yourself that life is a journey and you're figuring things out as you go and you're gonna mess it up along the way. I think for me, that's been one of the biggest things is just accepting like, yeah, I'm not gonna get it right all the time. And that's, I still have my friends, I still have my family, I still have the things that are important to me in my life, even though I've tripped over myself, I don't know how many times trying to figure out who this authentic self is, right? But I suppose that's where taking accountability mm. is important, yeah? Like life is messy, relationships are messy. Yeah. Like you're never going to never, like someone's got to make a beep noise because I want to swear. Were we really not <laughs> supposed to swear? Is that an issue? <laughs> okay. Um, but, but, but you do you do make mistakes and something that I find hard is because I'm because I because I am wanting to people please as soon as I know that I've upset someone or I've done something that's not great mm -hmm. I get on the defense because I'm like like me and do you know what I mean and yeah. it, it's a whole like messy situation but something that I'm getting better at is taking accountability so you're going to do things that are wrong, but as long as you put your hands up and say, I'm sorry, that was my fault. And obviously, and also something that I've learned is there's a good apology and a bad apology as well. Like oh, how yeah. many times have you had one of those apologies where you're like, I roll because it's not a real apology. It's like, sorry that you feel that way. I'm sorry if I'm, if you felt that way. And it's like, no, 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 no. Try yeah. that again. I had a tear. Sorry, Tasman. I had a tear. I did a terrible apology to my daughter not too long ago. Yeah, she. We had promised her that we would buy her a TV for her birthday, and it was a month or two after her birthday, and we hadn't bought the TV. And it, life is really busy, right? And so all these other things happened, and I had taken her to Sephora and like all these other things that I thought made up for the TV. And she came into the kitchen and she looked at me. She said, "Mama." I just want to tell you that you've disappointed me because you haven't kept you haven't kept your promise. Oh, and my first reaction was, "Are you kidding me? Do you know the things I do for you on a daily basis?" Like that was running through my head, and I looked at her and was like, "What are you? What? I'm going to need a minute." And she walked out and went into the living room, and I stopped, and I thought she's right. All she did was advocate for herself and tell me the truth of the matter. I had let her down. And so I went into the living room and this is where, you know, you have one of those moments where you high five yourself after. And I was like, Ben, you're right. I let you down and I'm sorry. You know, and I could see in her like how much growth and confidence that gave her. My parents would have never, I would have been grounded for a week and never got the TV, <laughs> you know? So it's like <laughs> seeing when I, when I going back to like, seeing what other people see in you, seeing that reflection in your children, I think for me as a mom, it helps me also center like who, who is my best self, which is like a, you know, 
a therapy line, but really it, it, you see that reflection back and it helps you collaborate, if you will. See, I don't see it as um, a therapy line. I've been listening, you use the word accountability. For me, there is me and there is my life. And any challenge that is in my life is there for me to learn how to get better at being me. Mm. So if my daughter is saying that to me, um, it's, it's actually not even about her. Yeah. It's about me. How am I going to be better at being me? How am I going to be more responsible? If something happens at work, I t and, and rather than accountability, I think I go through life with curiosity and kindness. Something happened. Oh, why did I do that? Why am I always feeling negative about that? Not why am I feeling negative? Why am I? Is there something about that person that's bothering me? Is it not aligned with me? Do I need to get better at that? Um, why don't I get on with that person? What's going on there? And every single thing, and one of the things is that if you notice that, the, you know when you say, I can't believe this is happening to me again. The universe is very generous. If you haven't learned your lesson, <laughs> it will give you more opportunities to learn that thing. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is that if you ask, oh, I wish I was more patient, it's not just going to land on your plate. You will be stuck in a queue somewhere. And you think, why am I in this queue? Oh, yes, I want to get more patient. <laughs> so I think everything, I'm a spiritual soul, you know this. I believe that when that soul entered this body, it was pure, and then life happened, and I picked up debris, and I learned some bad habits, and every step, my job is, by the end of the day, my days, I need to be as perfect as I can be. And everything, this, this evening, this conversation, how I carry myself, is all about me becoming better, being my authentic self. That was I very wool. wholesome. I want a wool right now. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I feel like that was a drop mic. Now you can. Edit. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Um, is there any other challenges that we could explore when we're thinking about being authentic? I mean, it's been. I grew up in, I want to say, because I don't want to say how old I am, um, in tech, I started over 20 years ago, and there was no way you were talking about being your authentic self. Like, there's just no way that was, that was part of the conversation. It was more about how do you blend into, how do you, you know, show up in a way that you do what you have to do to, to get through it. And I think for me, I've found there were times where I really felt like I was compromising myself. And I was compromising how I felt about things. And that felt, there was a lot of negative self-talk that came from that or a lot of like lack of confidence. And it really made me think like, am I in the right career? Am I doing the right things? But over time, you start to realize that's just a part of the growth. That's just a part of the journey. And that there's space for, there's space for that. There's space for compromise, right? And there's space for like, for learning. Um, certainly I think I have stopped questioning as much and just accepting that there's going to be times where I'm in conversations I probably don't want to be in and you just don't have to participate. Like you don't have to participate in every conversation that comes your way. Um, little things like that, I think are, you know, the, the things that come up on a daily basis. And when you find yourself in those situations, yeah. like, can you, cause wouldn't it be lovely if you could just walk away? Um, but yeah. I suppose that's not always going to be an option. No, but you can engage in a way that, that, you know, often there'll be group meetings. You don't have to contribute to every meeting, right? And you don't have to be in a space where you have, like, I find for myself, I'll know, like, hey, this conversation is happening and they're going to get to a place they need to get to. I can, I can sit and listen, but I don't have to necessarily participate in a way that I feel uncomfortable in. Like we don't all have the luxury of just being able to walk out of a work meeting or decide I don't want to be a part of this, but it is, it is 
up to you to set boundaries in terms of how much you want to engage in the situation. And boundaries is such a important, yeah. yeah. And when I first started this journey, boundaries are getting more and more important. And you need to set these boundaries, but you also need to respect your boundaries at the same time. Because even if you set a boundary, people are still going to challenge it. People are still going to, and sometimes it's not in a malicious way. Sometimes it's just because it's their bad habits that they, they've they picked up. But something that I find difficult, I don't know if you guys find this, but I set all my boundaries. I know what I want. I know, yeah, I set these all up. But then as soon as someone gives me a bit of resistance or someone tries to challenge it, I'm like, oh, people pleasing Sarah's back. Like, I just, yeah. But then, um, again, then that's an opportunity for you to get better at being you. So if I came to your house and you said, oh, Tasman, here's a cake I made. And I say, oh, no, but I'm, I'm not eating cake. I'm on a diet. And you say, oh, go on, just a small piece. And I say, oh, all right, then. Who's failed? I failed. True. And I think um, with, with, with people... People are never going to be the way you want them to be, full stop. They just aren't. And if you're waiting for everyone to be the way you want them to be so that you can be who you want to be, it's not going to happen. So just, and, and also sometimes we think they've got bad habits. And sometimes, and again, this goes back to values, but they are the way they are. And they may not see it as a bad habit, especially when you go through. Um, working with different cultures, what's acceptable in one culture may not be acceptable in another culture. And we make it really hard for self. I'm going to be accountable and I'm going to have boundaries and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And you're, it's almost like we're fighting with ourselves rather than being in flow with ourselves and allowing ourselves to say, you know, and I think one of the biggest challenges I feel is what is authentically yourself? There's almost two levels. First, you have to learn it yourself. And then you can show other people. You have to, learn, you have to A, understand that there is an authentic self. You have to learn what that is. You have to give yourself the gift of time, gift of self-reflection, gift of kindness, gift of curiosity. Build that up. And only then can you show up as that person i think it's a super hard practice like it, it because I, I mean i was raised in in a space where there's like critical 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 self-thought and you're always thinking like what did i do yeah right and that practice of giving that space is a really i think it's a it's a really tough place like it takes a lot of energy to sit in that space all all of the time and i guess that's what life is it's like that journey where you realize like it's not easy it's no. not easy. You no. know, like, it's like if you if you want to live in a space where you are aware and you're self-reflective, it takes time, it takes energy. It's it's not it's not the easiest path, but it's a well I think it's a well traveled path, if you will. And it's definitely worth it. I also think there's certain times in your life where you only have so much energy to give it. Yes. Right. Like you can't be 100 percent self-reflective and like going to yoga and doing all the stuff all the time. Sometimes I want to drink dirty martinis and, you know, like <laughs> eat bad food and that's okay. Um, but it's, it is one of those things where it's to be, I think the thing that you caught that you, that you mentioned there is to be kind to yourself and to give yourself the grace and the kindness you give others. It, it, this reminded me of um, an incident. My husband and I, so he rides bicycles mm -hmm. and he had a puncture and we were walking to his sister's house who had a puncture repair kit. And he said something, simple sentence, and I was triggered so much. I started crying in the middle of the street. Can you imagine me crying in the middle of the street? And he said, what is it? What is it? And I said, I don't know, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm crying. And um, we got to his sister's, you know, I, I cleaned myself up and we had a cup of tea. And I thought to myself, what, what did, what just happened there? Um, and then I realized that actually 
my um my confidence had been triggered there mm -hmm. i i felt that because he, he said on such and such a day maybe we do this and i thought he's forgotten it's my birthday he doesn't care about me blah 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 blah, blah. and i went Phew. but i knew that actually i needed to figure that out he didn't have to save me i had to save me and on the way back i said i figured it out <laughs> This is what happened. But um, it, it is hard work, but I think once you get over this initial hump of working really hard, mm. and for me, I know exactly when I started to do it. And it was one Easter, maybe about 15 years ago. It was a beautiful Easter. Um, I'd gone through the divorce. And the problem is often we only go down this route when somebody has passed away or we've gone through a divorce or something traumatic has happened in our life because we think life's too short i don't want to be somebody who i'm not anymore you know i want to be me and you don't have to wait for that point you can start today and you can start really really simply mm -hmm. and once you begin that momentum it becomes a practice it becomes something you do without even realizing you're doing it. And what you said about energy and how much energy it takes, again, this is where the self-care comes into play. Self-care is not what you do when you're broken. Self-care is what you do to, for yourself every day, little, 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 to keep you charged, to be able to handle those situations. Now, you talk about um, challenges. You know, I... I come from a certain culture education was really important in my family as a value you come from a different country you go to school um, because education is important kids there don't like you they don't understand because you know kid, britain in the 70s was a difficult time it was a difficult mm. time to be somebody of, of color and it reminded me of that i don't know has anybody watched the green book yeah. So you know when he says, um, I'm not black enough to be black or white enough to be white and I'm not man enough to be a man, so what am I? I grew up feeling like that because at home I wasn't brown enough to be brown. At school I wasn't white enough to be white and you just don't know what you are. And so that's, this is what I mean about giving yourself the grace to learn who you are and then you can show up as who you are. That must have been really difficult. And I mean, how how are your feelings around that now? You know what? At the time, because you come from a family where they say, don't rock the boat, just mm -hmm. go to school, don't don't say anything. Stay in line. Stay in line. And then you stay in line at home and you stay in line at school. And I remember um, it was really odd because these kids were my friends when we were younger. And we went into senior school and suddenly they didn't like me. And I thought, what happened there? Mm. Um, but you get not used to it. They use, you, you just deal with it. You just accept it um, until you can't accept it anymore. And then, you, then you'll then you just yell or I never swore. <laughs> never swore. I'm not going to live that <laughs> because down. Because you weren't allowed. You know, yeah, even yeah. that, you weren't yeah. allowed. You weren't allowed to express yourself like that. I'd love to hear you swear just once, Tasmin. Some, just, <laughs> just do it, do it. Because that's not who I want to be. True, and that is the lesson. That is not Tasmin. She's not a swearer. Um, uh, do you know, yeah, what, I think what would be really lovely now is to sort of share some like success stories of where we have shown up as being authentically us or where we felt that we have and i mean willow would you like to not to put you on the spot or anything well i mean i'm here yeah um that's a great question i think where i feel best about it is in the last like year is how i've shown up and how i've grown as a parent um about a year ago, my daughter started to show symptoms of like very severe anxiety. Um, and over, overnight just decided, like didn't decide, she, she was having a mental health crisis at, at the age of 10 and was like, I can't go to school. 
I can't do it, um, major panic attacks. And our first reaction, my husband and I's reaction was to like step up as an authority figure and say, you must go to school. You must do these things because that's what we were taught, right? Is like, no, you go to school because I said so. Push through, you'll be fine. Um, and it got to a point where she just really couldn't. And I learned how to be a lot more patient version of myself and a lot more empathetic version of myself than I thought I was capable of being. When you spoke about like being, you know, the being kind and, and giving people space, I'm like, if somebody pushes back on me, I fight. Like I'm, I'm fight or flight, I'm fighting and I'm going in hard, right? And it's like, oh, you wanna do this? Okay, let's roll. And I, I really have to like work that back for myself, but that comes as a result of what you learn as a child, right? Is I, my childhood was, I was, I was responsible for myself and I had to find that, that security in myself and how I move through the world. And I started to raise my daughter that way and just recognize like it fundamentally wasn't working. Um, but now we've like moved through this path and she's just one, like she's just wonderfully social and she's back in school and her grades are fantastic and her, you know, and it's not just as a reflection of me, but I really do believe how my husband and I have shown up in that and that I, I have said to her, and she has echoed it back to me. Um, she said, you should know how to do this. You're my mom. You should know, you should know this. And I said, dude, like I've never been a mom to a 10 year old before. I've never been a 47 year old woman before. I've never, I have never done any of this. And so you need to know right now, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> like I am, I am learning with you, right? And that felt so honest. Like it was just the most, honest moment that I had given myself in a really long time. Um, but yeah, it just, and I think you, you have to be kinder to yourself then yeah, because yeah, yeah. we all find ourselves in a situation, especially as SEOs, right? Be, working in the SEO industry, especially, um, when I first got my first role, I thought I had to know everything. Right. I thought I couldn't ask questions. They've hired me as a professional. If I ask a question, does that make me look weak? Does that make me look stupid? You have all these horrible thoughts that go through your head. And the reason I'm bringing up SEO, because it's not just SEO, but in your um, personal life as well, you find yourself in situations where you have to be responsible, like for you, you are, you are the mum, so you, you have to do something, but it's like, crikey, I've never done this before, where's I've the handbook? I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, and I think, I think as soon as you, I mean, does it help to sort of be, I don't know, like take it on board and be like, do you know what, it's okay that I don't know? Oh, it's so freeing, yeah, I, I felt just honest in the moment, and I actually had, and you don't always get it right, I didn't think this would become a mom talk. I'm sorry, everybody, but these are like the, the real experiences. Um, a few weeks later, or like a few months later, I, I promised Ben that I would just spend time with her. I wouldn't work. I'm not gonna work, I'm not gonna work. Well, I ended up working. And she again told me like, mom, you, you let me down, right? Like you were supposed to be and you didn't. Um, and, I, and I was like, I'm really sorry. And she said, it's okay, mom. This is your first time doing this. You're not always going to get it right. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> this is the best moment of my life. <laughs> so yeah, I feel, I feel really good about the space that I've created to say I don't know what I'm doing. That's wonderful. And it was such a positive, lovely environment and culture that you've created there. I mean, not every day, like, let's, <laughs> let's be, she's 11, you know, but no, it's, it's, it is, I feel really good about it. Yeah. Wonderful. Tasmin, how about you? What was the question? Again? Pay <laughs> attention. Come on now. Um, um, success story. I think all of that really resonated. I too have a daughter. <laughs> We can talk after. Yeah, we talked talk after. <laughs> um, I think for me, the big, not the biggest one, but the, the most recent one was, so, you know, a few years ago in my SEO role, I was made redundant and it felt awful that day. But then I thought, fine, what am I going to do now? I'm a certain stage in my life. I'm that far away from retirement. Do I just go and find another job and crawl to retirement? or 
do I do something different? And I think, again, this is about creating an authentic world for yourself. And I I wanted to get into coaching for 10 years, more than 10 years. And I thought, when am I going to do it? Why don't I just do it now? And instead of crawling to retirement, I spend the next 10 years of my working life building my ideal retirement. Mm. So that's when I went into coaching and training and thanks to you, podcasting. (laughs) And that's what I plan to do, spend the next few years building that up, enjoying myself in the process. Like I said, my life is filled with wonderfulness and it is. And then when I decide that I'm going to do a few, you know, less hours, I will just turn it down. And rather than think, at, you know, you get to retirement and think, what am I going to do? Am I going to go garden? Am I going to travel? Am I going to do this? I'm actually going to carry on doing exactly the same thing, maybe less of it, maybe travel more and still do it. And I think that for me was a big success. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I feel very empowered by these two success stories. <laughs> um, I suppose it's time for me to share yeah. a success story. And I think as you were talking, I was kind of in my head thinking, oh gosh, I need to come up with a success story. And I think for me, one of my biggest success stories is um, uh, <laughs> being out and proud. Yeah. Hey, thank you. <laughs> There was, there was a bit of a tumbleweed moment there, so I'm glad <laughs> that you uh, supported that. Um, but yeah, so my my experience of this was, so uh, as a lesbian woman, and that's even weird me saying, I don't know why, but I really struggle saying the word lesbian, and I don't know why, maybe that's something, I'll, I'll put that in my notebook to talk to my therapist. <laughs> Turn all that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I prefer gay. Let's call myself a gay woman. There we go. Um, so I was, I was quite late out. So, well, I don't know, 23. I don't know if that is late or if it's not, I don't know, but I was 23. And when I first came out, I was such in the closet. Mm. So, so deep down, like even so that when I set myself up on dating apps, I would do the whole thing of like interested in men, but then I'd like do the really sneaky thing of just messaging a load of women and doing that instead not a load of women because that makes me sound (laughs) rain it back (laughs) um and I remember going on do you know what I I didn't think I'd end up talking about this tonight so this might end up being very therapeutic for me um but I remember going on my first official date with a lady and I was so nervous because I thought everyone's going to be looking at me when they're not. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like everyone, like no one cares about you, Sarah. Everyone's got their own shit going on. Ah. You didn't beep. I gave you the eyes, Willow. I like it. <laughs> um, and it was such a journey. And yeah, and it was so nerve wracking doing it. But I did that. Um, but I remember other other situations where um when I being in relationships and um booking an Airbnb or a hotel or booking.com and I would kind of have to caveat I'm gay is that okay which yeah and you're looking at me but I it sounds bizarre but because and this is going to sound stupid but I didn't know how to be gay and I didn't know Again, there was no playbook. Uh, And one of the reasons why I think I was later out is I wasn't surrounded by Mm -hmm. a gay community. I didn't like everyone was like straight around me and definitely in society. I think it's getting better now. But when I was growing up, it was very like heteronormative. Do you know what I mean? That's what you see. Um, And I think it was Orange is the New Black that helped me. I don't know if anyone else has seen Orange is the New Black, but I think it was Alex on Orange is the New Black. Yeah, thumbs up. There we go. You're welcome. (laughs) Um, But yeah, that was that was the whole thing. And then even and this is the thing that I struggle with now is um, so I'm in a very loving relationship. Tash should be listening right now. So if she's not, 
like uh-oh. you know uh-oh. Yeah. but no she will be so hi Tash um but yeah lovely relationship love her to pieces where am I going with this my brain's just gone I'm just doing a devotion now to Tash and that's weird <laughs> um but yeah uh even oh when she gets misgendered that's a whole thing because again you have to come out right. again and again when I was early 20s and I was having conversations with in a work setting so agency side and I was having client meetings I was so careful about the words that I was using so I'd never say she or her I'd always say they Mm -hmm. them and got misgendered loads of times and yeah um uh, just thinking where my brain's going with this because it's going all over the shop. Um, but it took a while for me to actually speak up and be like, do you know what? It's not a he. It's not a he. It's not a him. It's actually a she and a her. And that felt really good to say. Um, what is funny, and I know this isn't malicious, but um, sometimes when you come out to someone, the funny response that I get back is, ah, oh, I'm okay with that. And I was like, well, I didn't know that yeah. I needed your permission, but thank you. I'll continue sure with I my game. That, my game. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, but now I am so like, I'm 10 years on now. So I think I actually celebrated 10 years being gay this year. So, you know, yeah. But I'm so, I'm so much better now. I'm unapologetic. Like I don't do anything that I was before. If anyone misgenders Tash, I will say, I I think I even have it on my social media handle in my profile, like queer and gay, got the whole like flag going on and stuff. But it has been a journey, don't get me wrong. And there's still times where I'm a little bit nervous. Um, and it is sad, like sometimes when um, me and Tash are looking at where to go on holiday, obviously it's not safe everywhere in the world to be gay. So obviously, but that's a whole different kettle of fish. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I think now I look back at Sarah those few years ago and it was just like, I think Sarah was just so I don't know what she was scared of, but maybe that's about being authentically myself and being, I wasn't sure how it would be accepted, I suppose. And that's a big challenge, isn't it? Life is big and scary, you know? It is. Yeah. And it sounds like you've managed it wonderfully. That's like a lovely success story. I mean, I should have worn like a pride flag (laughs) disco play suit tonight. Um, But yeah. And it is... It does feel good when you are more authentically yourself and you're showing up for yourself. Before we move on, I want to say thank you for sharing that. Well, yes. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, we've all been vulnerable tonight. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I can't sometimes, I don't know if you ever get this, but your mouth's just moving, your oh. words are coming out, and you're like, Story what are you of saying, my, Sarah? Ask, <laughs> ask my team. Story of my life. Yeah, yeah. It is this would be a fun thing to listen back to. So someone take Tasman. Let's uh yeah. And um, we were going to share some tools, weren't we? We were going some action yes, so with the SEO mindset podcast, we always like to share actionable tips, strategies that people can implement and take away. So Tasman. Um for me the biggest change was I gave myself time, so it's Maybe it's self-indulgent. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking it's responsible. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and journal. So every evening, even five minutes, ask yourself, how was today for me? And if something went wrong, if you said something you shouldn't have said, did something you shouldn't have done, didn't say something you wish you'd said, rewrite it. You, you get the opportunity to rewrite it. Next time that happens, I'm going to do this. Next time my daughter says, so I'm like you, daughter, um, and she would say to me, she'd come to me with a problem and I would try and fix it. And she says, I don't need a manager. I just need my mother right now. Can you give me a hug? So I would write that in my book. You know, next time she comes to me, this is what I'm going to do. And you're dress rehearsing, you're rehearsing for the next time. So time for self-reflection and journaling of my biggest tips. Always a fan of journaling, Willow. 
not a good journaler, but I'm taking it with me and I, I will do better. I have found um, over the last two years, the best time is just finding a carved out time for yourself. I wish to be super challenging and just life in general. And it doesn't have to be a long time. It can be 10 minutes a day. It can be 15 minutes a day. I walk three, four times a week and I walk for like an hour and a half. I'm a, I'm a total overthinker. Like I will rerun everything I've said here tonight 42 times, right? I will, everything will happen. And this just gives me a space where my brain is going and I'm reflecting, but it's not even a conscious spot. I put headphones in, I listen to music and I just, I walk. Um, I think for me, it's just finding, I think it's finding space for yourself that is for you, meant for you, for no one else, not doing chores, not doing like, oh, I'm taking time for myself while I'm doing laundry. No, you're not. Um, and that could be anything. It could be walking. It could be journaling. It could be lying flat in a dark room for an hour. Like what, whatever that looks like for you to find a healthy, dedicated time for yourself on a daily basis. And I suppose it's about getting inquisitive, isn't it? Curiosity, I think, is 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 huge yeah um it's one of my values and it's i'm curious about why i react the way i react to things but not in a judgmental way right and i say to my daughter when every day she leaves i say be curious and be kind right like just move through the world with curiosity and kindness and i think it just leads to so many lovely things it's so hard not being judgmental like it's yeah. It, no. we all need to do it and I think I think something that I struggle with is I'm really good at not being or try not to be judgmental on other people do you know what I mean be kind be yeah. courteous um but I think a lot of us don't do the same for ourselves oh absolutely it's treating yourself with the grace and kindness you treat others mm. right is is one of the I think the biggest sort of inner workings of like, hey, this thing I'm saying to myself right now about how I swore on the podcast and I wasn't supposed to, right? Like, would I say this level of critique to anyone else? And the answer is usually no, right? 100%. Go on, Tasman. Why do you say it's hard? Okay, I shouldn't have even started the question with why. Why is it hard not being judgmental you don't have to be why, why do you have to be harsh on yourself you don't you, you don't. don't it's it's only as hard as you make it true you get to choose this is a great thing about being an adult you get to choose you can choose to yourself i'm not going to be harsh i'm learning i'm learning how to be me every single day i'm getting better at it I think there's so many constructs in society and the way that we're raised that set us up in a way to view the world not as optimistically, right? And so I, while I agree with you and it's work, I do think that it takes a different, it takes um, a learning and a maneuvering through and breaking down some of the things that we've learned through life to get to a place where you don't sit in judgment or at minimum, like, I think sometimes I'm just going to, I'm going to be hard on myself, but I acknowledge I'm being hard on myself. Like, well, you're being stupid, but I'm still going to think about this for 23 minutes. You know, like it just is, it's part of the acknowledgement of, okay, I'm doing a thing that isn't super healthy right now, but I recognize I'm doing that thing. And next time, maybe I'll overthink for 21 minutes instead of 23 minutes. There's um, the 10, 10, 10, rule is yeah. that what yeah so um whenever a situation or anything that you're beating yourself up about um will it matter in 10 seconds 10 hours 10 months 10 years is that right yeah yeah, yeah. um there you go that's an actual tip right there. there you go so i'm not saying don't learn um but it's not <laughs> yesterday i was tired we had a lot to get done and i'm eating biscuits for breakfast <laughs> and I'm dunking it in thinking I know this is not good for me I know that I think that this biscuit has got the energy that I need to get through the day and I even know it's not true but I'm going to eat the biscuit anyway <laughs> see that's me and dirty martinis so it's you're much better off <laughs> so I'm not saying we don't learn but I think and this goes back to what we've, we've been talking about stress I know that any negative emotion that I feel, even irritability, is not good for me. Right. So 
something happened, I messed up, let's learn from it, let's say my apologies if I need to say my apologies, let's learn from it and move on. But I'm not, I refuse to put myself through that negativity because it's, it, it doesn't serve anything. And that whole negativity, right now, everything in this room feels beautiful. Everyone's here, everyone's enjoying themselves, everyone's having good conversations. If the three of us were sitting here all gloomy, the energy of the room would be like this. So if, you're, if you go through life beating yourself up all the time, your energy is going to be low. You're not even going to be able to have the impact that you're going to that you could have. Mm. So in my in our house, um, my husband and I, th there's a rule. We disagree with each other. There are times when we irritate each other, but we we don't argue. We don't shout. It's not okay. I love this man. I care for this man. Why would I shout at him? I can disagree with something he's done, but I can do it in a respectful manner. Mm -hmm. I always remember you telling me a really good tactic. After every argument, do something that is normal, like go and make them a cup of tea yeah. or coffee or yeah. whatever. Like do something to switch because in that in the moment, whatever's happened, whatever it is, whether I don't know, they've uh, the only thing that's come to mind, they've not loaded the dishwasher properly or something ridiculous like that. I can give you a list. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 um but yeah however we're feeling in that moment it is that moment and you've got all of these emotions coming up and sometimes you need to take yourself away don't you and switch it whatever that is because all that's happening we say to ourselves oh we've argued with this person and I'm going to give myself time to get all you're doing in that time is just validating again and again and again while you're right and they're wrong. So just break that negativity. He doesn't even want the cup of tea. I'm just handed it to him because I drink the tea. Um, and then have the conversation. So this could happen at work as well. If something has happened that you're not happy with and you can't make them a cup of tea, at least go and write something down. Write down what you're feeling, write down why you're feeling, be curious about why that happened. And don't go and talk to somebody who is just going to make it worse for yourself. Unless they are saying to you, okay, what are you going to do differently? How are you going to learn from this? They're just going to say, yeah, that manager, really horrible, blah, blah, blah. It's not helping you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I suppose I need to give an actionable tip now, don't I? I need to show up, show up for you guys, show up for you guys. Um, have the courage to say no is probably a good one, yeah? Because, again, Tasman, this is something... You're a very wise lady, aren't you? Lots of things that I've learned from have, you. Have the courage to say yes to yourself. But there's... Every time that you say yes to someone else or something else, you're saying no to yourself. Often. And yeah. you often, yeah. So I suppose, obviously don't go around just saying no all the time. Like That's probably not the thing to do. But make sure that the things that you're saying yes to, you're actually saying yes to them because you want to. You're excited about it, you're passionate about it, you agree with it, whatever it is. But if you're ever being asked to do something, and there's your gut is telling you something's wrong because your gut is there for a reason, yeah? Mm. Um, surely your gut feelings has got to do something to do with survival. I mean, I'm going down a science <laughs> route and I can't back it up, so I'm going to track back from that statement. <laughs> But nine times out of 10, if you listen to your gut and you listen to how your body's reacting to something, it's, it's reacting that way because it's telling you that you're uncomfortable mm -hmm. and it's okay to say no. And there's ways that you can say no in a respectful way, yeah? Um, so I think that is a big learning. And don't get me wrong, I do still say yes to a lot of things that I shouldn't say yes to, um, but... I think I am getting better listening to my body. And the more times that you do say no, 
the easier it becomes. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes a, a behavior, right? Or a habit. Mm. You have to do something like 14 times or 35 times or something for it to become a habit. That's so quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know what the number is. I'm backing out of the number just like you were backing out of the it's, science. But I know you have to do it a few times for it to become also, a I don't know. If, I, I don't know if this is backed up by science. But if you try something seven times, you end up liking it. Again, oh, I don't know if that... Let's we're really the... going down this like not quite scientific podcast thing yes <laughs> that's been that's help us no? I, I have tried aubergines more than seven times <laughs> i still do not like them <laughs> so no that's not true um so we are running out of time because what i'd love to do so we've got the space till 11 o'clock but we want to do some question and answers and we've got some incentives because I know it can be a bit daunting asking some questions so we've got some lovely incentives here but before we open the floor and people want to ask questions or share experiences or whatever they want to do Willow and Tasman is there anything else big question anything else that we haven't covered any last tip bits wise words I could keep going until someone says something. No, I think it's just like the, this is a journey, right? Life is a journey. This is a part of it. And, and figuring out who you are is, is for me, it's ever evolving because your life circumstances are ever evolving. And so, you know, really just give yourself the space and the kindness you would give others as you figure it out. Wonderful. Tasman? And enjoy it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not meant to be that hard. And if it's hard, then there's something wrong. There's something. Um, last year, I, I was able to go to Mecca for the pilgrimage. And you circumnavigate seven times because it, they say everything in the universe is going anti-clockwise. So you too have to go anti-clockwise. And it made me think, actually, if, if I am in resistance, if there's some resistance happening in my life, I'm not in flow. And when we were going around, it felt like flow. And now in life, I just think, if something's happened in my day that is causing me to be angry or I'm resisting, there's a learning there for me. And it's okay, because I just get to be better at being me. So if there is something that you want to do, if there is something that you're doing that you don't want to do, whatever it is, there must be, everyone in this room will have something in their mind right now. Be kind to yourself, accept it, and go and do go and do that thing. Go and be that person you want to be. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, I feel like we need a little round of applause. <laughs> hey. So hopefully we're all now clearer on what being authentically you means. And raise of hand, who's feeling like they can do this? Who can make the steps, do the journey to be authentic? Yeah, put your hands up. Yeah. Everybody in the back. But <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good news. We've done something here. We've done something that uh, we set out to achieve. Now, so now it's time for Q&A. We call it Q&A, don't we, Tasman? But it always ends up being a more of like a sharing stories experience, and it's lovely. So we have got, so for the first four people who ask a question or share an experience, we have the wonderful SEO in 2024, Majestic by David Bain. Yeah. Uh, but before I do that, there's also... Everyone needs to look under their chairs because if you've got a post-it note, is anyone, can anyone find a post-it note? <laughs> okay, hold, hold the post-it notes. Hey, so if you have a post-it note in your hand, I mean, please, there's, there's a lot of books to get through. So yeah, go and check the other chairs and stuff. But everyone who's got a post-it note, you also get a copy of the SEO in 2024. So make sure that you come to me with your post-it note and I can give you But please, please still ask a question. Uh, so, Charlie, are we good with the... Yeah, hello. Can you guys hear me? You just about can. 
this is a microphone, would you believe it or not? It looks a bit like a sponge football, but it is actually a microphone designed to be thrown and catch. So it's called a catch box. I absolutely love them. Um, hey, hey. Would anybody like to open the floor with the first question and be ready to catch it? That's quite easy. Let's start. Let's start here. Shall I also chuck the book? No, I won't do that. <laughs> do I hold it like this? Sorry, this feels really weird. Um, I was back earlier, we were talking about how 20 years ago you'd have given a different answer to what you were today. Something I struggle with is imposter syndrome. Mm. I don't know if anyone else feels the same, especially in this industry. <laughs> um, I find myself one month, maybe, space of four weeks, I feel like I can do this, I'm amazing, I'm brilliant, and then I'll go flip the other side and I'm like, why am I here? <laughs> why am I doing this? I don't know what I'm doing. And I find it's like a, just a continuous cycle that I'm getting better at, but do you guys have any advice for someone relatively new in their career starting this? I think the lovely thing is you said you're getting better right? And you're acknowledging in yourself that you're growing. Um, I still have whispers of that where I think, when are they going to be? I've been doing this for, I say 20 years. It's not true. It's like 27 or something like that <laughs> at this point. Um, and I started on an internal IT desk to COO to an SVP. And I have had a, a ton of successes, a ton of setbacks, but I still think there might be a moment someone's going to knock on the door and be like, what are you doing here? <laughs> right? Like, what's going to, what is this thing? And I find, you know, going back to the tools of reflection, if you can take a moment to look back at those moments where you were feeling like, oh yeah, I did these things and just spend time in that and spend your energy in that space, which I know sounds really like, you know, airy fairy. I wish I could tell you like, have a sip of orange juice and you will be fine. But I, <laughs> or I a do, margarita. Right? Like, this would be oh. great. Um, but really, like, reflect on and journal. I don't journal. I love that idea of, like, write down, oh, yeah, I did these things really well. And and give yourself that, that opportunity to reflect on those things. And just, it's okay. It's okay if you feel that way. Mm. You know, you're acknowledging it and you're growing through it. And I think the times where you do have the feeling of imposter syndrome lean into it because it means that you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and when you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone that's how you grow that's how you develop mm -hmm. so I get that it's horrible this imposter syndrome like I have imposter syndrome like we all have imposter syndrome here but uh, I mean I feel like I spoke for you two then like but oh no I've said it I do I and I almost wish sometimes we didn't put definitions around these things because it's just growth, right? And and sometimes there's so many definitions around things that we're like, oh, I have that thing. Well, no, you're just growing and learning and evolving. It's it is life, right? And so maybe my advice would be like let go of some of those definitions and just move through your experience. Yeah. And accept it is actually I'm invested in myself. I'm growing myself because if you don't have these feelings, then you're just staying in your safetyness. Safety. Safetyness is a word, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> you're just staying in your safety net. So I think the times where you have that imposter syndrome, just go for it and, yeah, carry on and you'll get better. And I don't think it'll ever go away, which I'm, I'm sorry to say, but lean into it, enjoy it, and make sure that you celebrate your wins, yeah? So every time that you try something new and you get over a hurdle and you achieve something, whatever it is, no matter how small, make sure that you take a moment, get yourself a wind jar, yeah, we, we love a wind that. jar. So get a plastic, clear glass, whatever, a clear jar, get some post-it notes. Every time that you've done something, you've won something, something's gone right, write it down, pop it in your wind jar. Over the weeks, months, years, or however long you're going for, you will see this jar filling up. And that is a visual representation of how badass am I? Look at all <laughs> this wonderful stuff that I'm doing. And on your down days, on your imposter syndrome days, when they really get to you, pick out a post-it note, read back on something that you've achieved and actually think, ah, I, was, I had imposter syndrome on, on this situation or this task, but I'm... I'm much better on now. I've grown. So a wind jar is another good one. Mm -hmm. Tasmin? Saying that at every level there's a different devil. And you said, um, I say to myself, I can do it. I'm awesome. I'm this. I'm this. And when you're feeling that, you're moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you're on another level. And then you feel imposter syndrome. 
So reframe it. That is telling you you're doing the right thing. Keep going. I like that. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> and you get a book. Cool. Woo! Right. Uh, hands up. Okay. <laughs> Is this thing working? Yeah. Um, to be fair with you, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> but um, something that Tasmin said today sort of just got me back a bit to the point where I was made redundant myself, um, two years into being into my first SEO role. So I was sort of just getting a bit to know more what I liked doing in the realm of SEO. If it was content, tech, perhaps both, um, backlinking and all that. Um, and it really shattered my confidence, which was extremely weird for myself because up to that point, I didn't feel that I'm ever in danger to like lose my livelihood, my, my job. Um, and was just wondering if you have any kind of perhaps advice for people who struggle with this at this point. Um, I did as a co-worker to a lot of people that since then have been through redundancy um, they actually got rid of 90 people in one go and then another 90 and so on so I, I was sort of there like trying to like support I felt like I was taking all of this a bit too much on myself and I was like oh I wish I could do more but I didn't know what to do so I think it would help a lot just to show this to them yeah I, I was made redundant on my week off it was in lockdown um i'd been working super hard at argos because it was one of the few retailers that could actually carry on trading through sainsbury's so we were very busy um i was also working for the great place to work colleague development and was working with hr bizarrely to build a platform to have self-care tips for the people in the industry. Ouch. And I was caring for um, my mother-in-law. She fell very ill at the beginning of lockdown. She lost her sight, her dementia got worse. There was nowhere to take her. So, you know, I was caring for her 60, 70 hours a week. And I was finished. So when they said, have a week off, I thought, where would I like to go on my week off? I would really like to go to Kerala to this yoga retreat. Well, I can't because there are no flights, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. So I created a retreat. I built myself a plan. I was going to wake up and I was going to do this. And I was going to have coconut water and I was going to go for walks. <laughs> and, da, da, da. Um, and day three, so day three is when my manager rang me and said, you need to be on this call, I went on the call found out that um, this particular war was going offshore. <laughs> then I realized that was me. Um, and I was devastated because it was my, my self-worth went like that. But then the next day, I had a choice. I either carry on crying or I go back to my retreat. And that's what I did. And since then, some of the people who come to me for coaching have been in that space where they've been made redundant or they're in a really toxic environment. And what they're doing is desperately learning. You know, I'm, if I, I need to apply for a gazillion jobs a day and I need to take this course and I need to do this and, and they're crying. And I say to them, you need to stop and you need to recharge. Um, and fortunately for, for them and for, for me, they do that they realize that they are completely burnt out mm. and they're no good to anyone, including themselves. And so for those people who are in that space, it is an opportunity. It's not you, it is them. <laughs> it is absolutely them. Take that opportunity to take a step back and think, what do I want to do? That's when through those you know, on my retreat, I created a vision board. And bizarrely, I showed you that picture. On that vision board was a picture of me and my business card. And on the business card, it said, coach, trainer, speaker. It didn't say podcast. I didn't even know about <laughs> podcasting. Um, you know deep inside you what, what you want to be. And you have to allow. If you allow yourself that space, you can find out. Um, Self-care. Um, and, and be kind, progress, you know, nobody's going to 
take ownership of your life or take ownership of your career. That's you. That's all down to you. But do it in a way that is um, progressive, development, um, developmental, and, yeah, don't beat yourself up. That's amazing. Thanks. Thank you very much. Great question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two more books. Where are we going? I'm very good throw-in. I'm impressed. It's still quite scary to catch, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have a little kind of tip as well as a question, um, if that's yeah. okay. Um, so my tip is, I can't remember where I heard it, so I'm sorry, whoever in the ether that gave me this tip, but um, I was told that the first thing you think when you experience something is what society has taught you to think. And the second thing is what is authentically you. So um, the way I tend to explain this to people is if you perhaps come across a social situation that you're not used to, perhaps you, you know, see someone wearing something that you wouldn't wear yourself or something like that, and you immediately judge them. And then you go, oh, no, they should be able to do whatever they want. That second thing, that's authentic you. That's how you should be. And you should absolutely accept that second way of doing things don't listen to the first way because that's just the way society has taught you to be thank you so much very valuable thank you. Thank you. um and then my question um it's a shame jack isn't here actually because it is related to uh, neurodivergency so i don't know if anyone else in the room is a member of the nd community hi guys hi guys, hi guys. love you all um, and everyone else, obviously, but, um, <laughs> but uh, as a ADHD and possible autistic myself, um, I struggle with uh, extreme self-awareness. This is something that I've had multiple therapists tell me, <laughs> and it's quite uncomfortable when somebody says, you're really self-aware, aren't you? And I'm like, am I any more than anyone else? Turns out, yes, I am. Um, but that often means that I can spend quite a lot of time trying not to be that because I'm so aware mm. of what I'm doing and like how I sound or my mannerisms or, you know, if somebody once called me annoying, I'm like, okay, I'm annoying for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, and I'm really aware of it. Um, so I was wondering if you guys had any tips on like how to just accept the bits of you that you might be a little too aware of and doesn't mean they're necessarily bad things but just how to teach yourself to kind of be like it's okay that I'm aware of that thing that I say that thing or whatever and move on instead of thinking about it I mean thank you so much for being vulnerable mm. and sharing that and before we answer the question just want to do a quick shout out to um, Neurodivergent in SEO the community the space um, yeah. <laughs> If, if if that is you, go in, search online. Neuro, I really struggle saying that word. Neurodivergent in SEO, that's why it is, isn't it? Uh, go and search for that. Be part of that community. Find find people that are having the same experiences as you. Uh, so, yeah, just wanted to do that. But Willow or Tasman, would you like to answer the question? You want me to go first? <laughs> I, I can, I, I don't know if I have like a satisfying answer. I wish I, I had something for you. Um, my daughter has ADHD and I, I see her working through this, a very keen awareness of all the things that are her, right? Um, if I think of my own experience, I know it's not a super becoming thing, but I'm ego driven. I, 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 the worst thing for me is to be embarrassed. I, I hate it. I don't take jokes well. Don't pull a prank on me because I am not going to handle it well, <laughs> Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> These and and that's not a becoming characteristic. And so I think for me, I'm very, very, very aware of something that I find unbecoming in others that I see in myself. Um, and it's a it's just a work in progress to be kind to myself in it and to sit in the moment and go, okay, it's here. So what? So so what? What does it actually, is anyone here looking at me in a different way because I've said that thing? Um, Self-acceptance is an easy thing to say, and I think we've kind of touched on it, but just it's like a growth thing that's just an always-on 
behavior. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but I, you know, thank you for sharing that experience. Well, thank you. I think, um, again, probably not a satisfying mm -hmm. answer for you. My daughter has autism and ADHD, and it has taken me a long time to learn how to be the right mother for her. Mm -hmm. And I'm still learning. What I found has helped is for me to praise her. Now, that might not have to come from someone else. That may have to come from you. And that's sometimes really hard to do. Praising her, ex um, you know, making real big fuss about the things that she does well. Because she does so much well. And I think the things that she does well, maybe other people don't see, but I see. When things aren't going okay, not trying to fix it. Just give her a hug, and that's okay. So when, when we say about self-acceptance and self-love, and I went through many years thinking, what is this nonsense? I've now become somebody who understands that actually that is of critical importance in your life. So maybe... I mean, is that, how, how does that sound to you right now when I'm saying these words? What does it sound like to you? I mean, it, it does help to just have other people kind of validate the, you know, the experiences I'm having, other people are having. Yeah. And even if it's not neurodivergent related, um, and it's also really nice to hear someone say, like, they're working hard to be the right kind of parent for someone that is in the community because that's my parents are still very much learning I was only diagnosed um three years ago so mm -hmm. and I'm 30 so <laughs> they've completely had to change the rule book and now they're like ah oh, that makes a lot of sense because <laughs> yeah. I was a nightmare as a kid so thank you for being you know um but yeah it's I don't know it's it's still hard to hear other people say you have to just be like say what well, I am who I am um, and you have to be kind to yourself because again that's something that I find really hard as Sarah was saying earlier I find really hard to just say that's just me and that's okay yeah. and it's you know especially when it comes alongside the stigma of being ADHD or autistic mm -hmm. or anything else that has a label any other kind of label that, can yeah. can you find yourself a cheerleader <laughs> like I'm not talking like pom pom. I mean that would be wonderful, isn't yeah, it? If you had your own personal cheerleader who was like, "Yeah, go." Um, but something that has helped me is finding people that support, build me up, uh, say the right things, especially when my imposter syndrome is coming in, or something's gone wrong, or I don't know something's not gone quite right there's certain people that I know that I can go to and they will say the right things they will do the right things sometimes they just give me a hug that I need so I think a big thing would be find your cheerle cheerleaders find people that can big you up and you could put them all in a whatsapp group together or find them when you're in person but unfortunately there are some our souls in the world and I'm just going to say it yeah and I think a big thing a good thing that I came to terms with is not everyone's going to like me but am I bothered yes deep down a little bit maybe <laughs> but that's people be people please and Sarah but at the end of the day I always think who are you to me yeah like how are you influencing me why why because People are always acting in a way because of their own stuff, yeah? Because of their own, um, I don't know, like how they're not feeling good about themselves and things like that. And it is a shame. And I, I wish that we lived in a society where everyone was lovely to each other, everyone built each other up. But unfortunately, we don't. And we have, we, we have people who um, sort of don't support each other. But I think if you can accept that and be like okay you're just not my person do you know what I mean and move on and don't waste your time on that person find go somewhere else find communities you know 
go to the ni ne the, the, the words neurodivergent in the SEO community or wherever that you can find support or a cheerleader, do that. And yeah, and you don't have to be liked by everyone, I think as well. That's something that I'm coming to terms with as well. And it is hard, but the more that I accept that, the easier life becomes, I suppose. Don't know if that's helpful. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess the only thing I would add to that is that uh, don't make that your like family or your partner, because I have a lovely family. We're all super close. I have a wonderful boyfriend. You know, I have a lot of friends around me. And they're all cheerleaders, but I'm, my brain immediately goes, they're all biased. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they're all biased. So make it people that, like, I don't know, colleagues. or So basically, yeah. people that are not going to get any kind of benefit out of making you happy other than just making you happy. Um, Wonderful. Right. We are running out of time, but we've got, I want to squeeze one last question in the book. I mean, look around, see who you feel comfortable chucking the book to. Not the book. The blade box. I'm gonna go right behind. Um, oh. yep. <laughs> Hello. So um I just wanted a bit of a talk about my story. I'm a bit like it's not normally me who would normally talk about it, but I used to work for another an agency and I had a had a boss who was a bit let's say negative and was just not very nice. And I left about six months ago. And I just say really now that I think I'm glad I'm glad I went because I had a lot it's just it was just the pressure of them just being not nice and everything. And um I'd say it's helped me a lot more in my confidence and everything as well. And also just being myself as well, like you've just been talking about tonight. But um I just one question is when you're looking for like someone like a mentor or someone, what would you say would be the best like what Qualities would you look for in someone like that? Me and Willow instantly looked at you there, Tasman. <laughs> Ask yourself, what is it that you want from that relationship? So um, more and more, the word coach and mentor are being swapped around. Coaching in its purest form, that person won't tell you what to do because you're meant to, deep down you know. And the coaching agreement will be for a shorter period of time. You may go to them and say, I want some help finding a new job. I want some help um, being able to speak in public. And there'll be a set criteria and you'll have X number of sessions. And the questions, it'll be, the coach will ask you questions and you'll work your way through it. The mentorship relationship generally lasts longer and that person will be somebody that you want to become like them. You want to have that type of career. And they will be, uh, they will give advice. A coach, technically, a coach shouldn't give you advice. When it's in a, like a coaching training program, that's when you get almost like a hybrid model. So what's, what is it that you're seeking? Just probably just someone to be able to talk to about SEO and stuff like that, really, because... I find that sometimes it's hard to find someone who like might have might be able to give you tips on different things and stuff. Yeah. Like, like I was saying about um, imposter syndrome before, I got a lot of that re recently. And where I was, not as much as I used to where I used to be with the boss and everything. But yeah, really, it's just stuff like that. Really, yeah. So I think somebody who's um, you know gone through that path that you want to go along somebody who is willing to see you as a whole person. So often you've got these high-performing individuals who will say to you, oh, you know, do this and do that and go and do this course and get up at five and whatever, 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 rather than looking at you as a whole individual. You may have family commitments. You may have other interests. So if they can respect you as an holistically, um, that's a good quality to look for, somebody to give you advice, somebody who's already done the thing that you want to do, and somebody that you can talk to rather than them just telling you where you feel that you're confident to be able to express your opinion. Wonderful. I'm very sorry, and I know that we didn't... Sure. One more. Uh, one, one yes, one more. yes, definitely. Uh, Chuck the... Oh, <laughs> put her hand up three times. 
maybe a quick one because you already like mentioned it but it was about burnout yeah because i know i've struggled with it myself and i know people have how to recognize burnout yeah because i for example i was working at a very bad agency and i burnt out without even realizing it yeah. i only realized it when i got fired because of low performance and turn, turn back on everything and realized okay that happened i was definitely out done completely burned to hell so uh because you mentioned it that's where i got the question from uh if you could advise to people regardless of where they are in their careers how to recognize those signs of burnout because we all have the resources and how to handle it it's very uh, a broad topic that's talked about but nobody tells you how to recognize it um so if you have no capacity mm -hmm. to suppose think of somebody that you really love and they come to you and say i need <laughs> I mean, great song, great song. <laughs> um, I need your help with this. Or they come and they, they start crying and you cannot deal with it. Like you just can't. That's not your normal behavior. If you're acting in a way that isn't your normal behavior, if you are snapping, losing your temper, if you are not sleeping properly, so the, um, there's a really great book that I've been reading um, while well, I finished it. It's called um, Feel Good Productivity by Ali Abdo. And he says that three types of burnout. One is when you are doing too much. One is when you are not spending time recharging. And one is when you're doing things that are not aligned with yourself. So you might actually not be working very hard, but the things that you're doing, they're not aligned with you. And often we, we have a bit of each of those things. So if you are um, not sleeping well, if you're finding that you're not looking after your health, if you're snapping at people, or if you've just tapped out, <coughs> if, you're ex if you're feeling mentally exhausted, if somebody comes and says, I need you to help me with this, and you can't, all of those, do, are any of those signs ringing true to you? I mean, some of them, yeah. yeah. Because like uh, the situation I had uh, was, um, I, there was no snapping, there was no like that kind of reaction. It was more of, uh, it was happening internally rather than externally. So that's like the thing, like I, that's why I hadn't figured it out because I would have figured out if I had snapped at somebody because yeah. I don't do that. Yeah. But it was happening, I was snapping at me from inside, you know? And some of the things you mentioned are the things that happen, like with somebody will just come and say something for me to do something and just I couldn't or I couldn't just take the inputs of me having to do something. And yeah. that is, yeah, because uh, there, there's like the internal blockage uh, when they're burning out. That's how it starts, I think. Um, so sometimes what happens to me is people will say, oh, Tasman, and you need to do this or what about this and I can't I just can't yeah. take it in it's a bit like you know when you've got a really dry plant and you try and water it and it goes everywhere instead of going in the plant that's that's sometimes how I feel so that I don't know if you've got any other examples well we are going to have to time is a ticking <laughs> I am sorry Tasman I'm very very sorry I, but up all the time that was a wonderful question, but I would like to say we have got the space until 11 o'clock. So please come and like talk to us, find us, chat to us, chat to each other. We're all going to be at Brighton SEO as well. Um, so another woo. I'm loving the energy. Um, so I would just like to say um, thank you again. So thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us for this live podcast. Um, so this has been recorded. So it will be available on the SEO Mindset podcast and the Search with Kanda podcast. Thank you again to all of our wonderful sponsors. Enjoy what's in the in your goodie bags. We have also, we've still got drinks in the fridge um, that need to go. We've still got pizza over there. So please, like me and Tasman don't want to take it home with us, do we? <laughs> Eh? Chocolate. and chocolate so please and you've got a bag you've got a bag to like put it all in just want to say one more thing because me and Tasman need to get 
me, Tasman and Jack need to get better at promoting other events. So if you've enjoyed tonight, then in your goodie bags, there is a leaflet where there's a QR code to a Google form where you can get notified about other events like this that we'll do in the future. So we'll pretty much every time there's a Brighton SEO, we will do something like this. Yeah, Tasman? Yeah, yeah. I'm not just springing this on you. And you're like, what? Say, what are you talking about, sir? There you go. <laughs> so please do, uh, in your goodie bag, says that leaflet, do the QR code, pop your details in, and we can keep you updated. But yes, thank you again. And yeah, uh, we've got the space till 11. So mingle, eat, drink, and all of that lovely stuff. <laughs>